this video, let's take a look at some basic mixing and editing workflow tips when working in Studio One. So when I first started working with Logic, which was, like I said, it was a long time ago now, but one of the things that I absolutely loved is coming from Pro Tools, how Logic had basically selection-based groups. And basically anything that you had selected, you could make adjustments to things, you could make adjustments to your sends, you could make adjustments to your channels, and they would all move relative to each other. So as small as this is, this was a huge thing for me. And this is one of the reasons that when I was working in Logic, I actually, I love this about it because I didn't have to be locked to creating a group. If I just wanted to quickly readjust or rebalance a couple elements together, then it was so easy to do. So like I've mentioned in previous videos, this is something that we have in Studio One as well. Anything that you do with tracks that are, or channels that are multi-selected, if you wanted to add a plugin on one thing, so for example, if I wanted to add a Pro EQ, as long as they're all selected, that Pro EQ is going to go across everything. If we have a send that is active, that adjustment that I'm doing over here, this is relative. And it's the same thing, just remove this analog delay for a moment. It's the same thing if you're working with Q mixes. So I'm gonna to go to QA, we'll enable our Q mix. And like I said, it's the same thing. Now we know from previous video that the minute we change a Q mix level, that it will unlock itself from the main fader or the main mix, if you will. So if I adjust this, I'm adjusting everything together, but keep in mind, it's all relative. So a couple things I wanna point out. First of all, fine mode. When you're working and you're doing a mouse click and drag, uh, some of these movements over here, they can be pretty coarse. We can jump, you know, five or six dB with just a small little bit of a movement. Let's say I'm at like minus four, or let's say I wanted to trim this up a dB. One really awesome feature that we have is by holding on the shift command, and this goes for pretty much anything, anytime you're adjusting parameters in Studio One on different plugins or on faders or sends or whatever. Holding down shift will give us fine increments where we're doing basically 0.1 increments. And you can make, you know, large adjustments with your mouse. They're still moving in fine increments, but, uh, you know, this is only representing a couple dB versus if I did the same thing same movement gesture, that would be like 10 dB. So that's the first useful tip is using the shift modifier. Now, the second thing I wanna talk about is temporarily removing at least one parameter from a selection-based group. So let's say I have this setting over here and I've gain staged everything. I'm gonna hold down my shift modifier and let's say somewhere around here. If I needed to temporarily just turn down one element, then I can just hold down the alter option key. And this basically just it takes this one fader out of the group and it just removes it. So this can be useful because maybe I have a selection made. Maybe I'm trying to balance these three elements. Maybe it's the string or these two elements, the strings and the woodwinds together. So let's find a section where these are playing. I'm going to solo these. Maybe I want to turn down the woodwinds, but I want to keep the selection base group because I want to be able to grab these together. I just hold down alt and then I'm just temporarily suspending my that one fader from the group. Also, I could add shift, and now I'm giving myself kind of like a fine fader resolution. And then of course, we can add other tracks, and we can adjust everything together. So by far, this is one of my favorite things about Studio One. It was the thing that I absolutely loved about Logic, and it works the same way you would expect. Now, a couple other things just I want to point out really quickly. Anytime you have multiple channels selected, anything that you do, like we know it's going to apply to everything. And you can also drag and drop plugins from the browser. So if I was to drag this compressor over these two, because I have these two channels selected, this compressor is going to be applied to both of these. I could have soft tube tape on here as well. Maybe I have this one, this one, and this one selected, and then this one, if I want soft tube tape on everything, just drag across and it's going to be on everything. So it's going to add soft tube tape to here and it's gonna add soft tube tape to these ones. Now in the same way that we can select multiple channels, if I wanted to, for example, bypass or deactivate a whole lane, as long as they're in the same lane, so for example, all of these sends over here that are in the same lane, if I wanted to activate all of them, I'm just gonna activate the power button over here, and if I wanted to deactivate this, the same thing goes for plugins. So for example, if now I deactivate the Pro EQ, it's going to deactivate the first plugin insert across all of these channels. So it deactivated tape as well. 
Once you kind of get used to this, it becomes really, really useful. Now, another thing to take a look at is we have macros in Studio One. This is something that I do have information available. And also there's a lot of information from a lot of other content creators in terms of how to create a macro. But I have macros created for my most used plugins that I like to use. So if, for example, I had pulled these up and I need to do some basic EQ, I can just select both of these. I fired off a key command, which is linked to a macro. So this allows me to just add plugins really easily to my different channels. I could add another macro over here. Um, so now I've added a VU meter. Another thing that's really nice is when you have multiple channels selected, Studio One has a micro view for all of their native plugins and also some third-party plugin developers like Brainworks. Uh, they also have a micro view. So uh, either right-clicking and choosing the expand option, or in this case, it would be collapse or expand. We can do this and also just a single click. So for plugins that support this feature, we actually have a kind of like a micro view, which just gives you some basic insight into things. So for example, if we had a very specific EQ curve that was on this plugin, maybe something like that, we move over to the next plugin, and this one had something that was entirely different, um, maybe like that. In the macro, or sorry, rather in the micro view, I could select both of these and just open them up, and I can very quickly see that they each have a different um, EQ curve. So because that's available in the plugin thumbnail. Also, it's not just for show. If you really wanted to, you could actually click, hold, and drag and make adjustments to this, but it's not something that I would feel, I guess, confident making those types of EQ adjustments with a tiny little GUI. Now, in addition to that, if you have um, anything that you want to copy from one to the other, it's just a matter of like copying these, is, is selecting these, and I could drag over either single instances of this plugin, let me move this out of the way, or if I wanted to, I could also drag the entire effects chain. So we know that we can just do this if we wanted to drag and drop these plugins over, and that'll get us both of those. Let me just remove these. We'll move this one as well, but we can also click, hold, and drag from the top, and we can drag an entire effects chain from one channel to the other. And if we had multiple channels that were selected, actually, let's do this right now. I'm going to remove everything from these. If I wanted to drag this whole entire effects chain, maybe I wanted to drag tape to this, and then maybe I wanted to drag, what do we got? This tube tech over here. Now, maybe I'm really happy with this setting, and I want to drag it to all three of these. It's just a matter of selecting all three of these click, hold, and drag from the top where it says drag effects chain. Now it's dragging the entire effects chain over from that one channel to all of the others. Now, not only does this work with respect to plugins, but this also works with respect to sends. So for example, let me create a new channel over here. If I wanted to copy over uh, everything that I have on this one over here, or maybe this one over here, I could drag the whole entire effects chain over like this, and in addition to that, if I hover my cursor right where it says sends, notice that it says drag send chain from here. So now I could drag each one of these over manually, one at a time, and that would copy the sends over. But if I had, let's say I have three, four, five, or maybe six, maybe you're doing um, some vocal editing or something like that, and you have another vocal track, but you want to use the exact same sends, then we can just click, hold, and drag from here and it's going to give us an option to drag the whole send chain. So just clicking here and then dragging it over and it says copy sends and then we've copied over everything. But one more thing to point out, if you have an entire effects chain that includes your fader levels, your send levels, all of the plugins and panning anything that has to do with it. So let's say I have this track over here and I import another track. I'm going to remove this temporarily. Let's say that I have a new blank track and I say to myself, I want to use the exact same settings entirely. Maybe I've recorded something. Maybe I've recorded a stereo pair, a microphone, where I've recorded some congos, and then I want to do something where I record another pass, and I want it to be the exact same thing, but it's going to be a different performance, and I want them on the other track. Then we can right-click, and we can just copy the channel settings, and right-click, and we can paste the channel settings. So there's kind of like micro-level, and then there's macro-level, and then there's like a, you know, a, a zoom-out level where Okay, if you just want all of the channel strip settings, in all honesty, it's as easy as selecting the channel, Command C, select Command V. And now we have literally everything that's coming from the one channel. So we don't have to drag each plugin across one by one. We don't have to set the level to minus 9.4 and then the panning to left 33. We can just copy these. 
Now let's say you have something where perhaps you have multiple tracks that are beside each other. So in this case, I'm gonna remove this track. Let's say I have all of these tracks. So I've got five tracks in total. I'm going to add five stereo tracks. So now we have these tracks over here, everything here. Let's say that I wanted to take the exact channel strip settings from the mixer, their levels, the sends, the plugins, everything. And I wanted to copy all five of these onto these. It's the same thing. I'm gonna actually change my console view. We're gonna drop it down over here. And also let's close all of our expanded tracks. All of these tracks that I have selected. So this one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna go Command C, and then I'm gonna select these ones. And let's go to our larger console, and now Command V. And now I can copy over everything that came from the previous five tracks. If I was missing a couple of them, like if I wanted to do something like, let's do this one, one, two, four, and five. Again, Command C, one, two, four, five, Command V. It's going to copy whatever you want from the selected channels onto the newly created channels that you have. So once you kind of get used to this, it makes it very, very easy to work with Studio One. So we have the shift modifier to give ourselves our fine increments. We know that we can drag and drop anything bi-directional. We know that we can drag and drop individual plugins to different sections, to multi-selected channels. We know that we can drag a whole entire effects chain. We can drag uh, individual sends, a whole send chain. We can copy the whole entire console settings if we want to. So that's how the selection-based uh, groups work in Studio One. It's very similar to Logic, but I think it's actually a little bit more detailed if I'm being honest. Let's hop over to Logic for a moment. I wanna take a look at a preference. Um, if we open up our preferences and we go to the general and editing, we have these different options that I'm pretty sure they weren't available in version eight and version nine, where we have marquee tool click zones and we have fade tool click zones. So let's take these off for now and let's take a look at editing here. We have what I was used to in Logic. It's it's an arrow tool. And if you wanted different tools, like if you wanted to change to um, a marquee selection tool, you would have this. You also have a secondary tool, which you can basically hold down control and I can temporarily toggle to a, to a secondary tool if I want to. But this is very much just a tool that we can use to lasso select things and we can grab uh, different audio regions and move them around. Then we have things like we have a scissors tool and stuff like that. Pro Tools, it's referred to as a smart tool. In Studio One, they call it the smart arrow tool. In Logic, we have the marquee click zones and we have the fade tool click zones. So what this does is, first of all, let's enable them both. In Logic, when you're hovering your cursor at the top, and this also depends on the vertical height, but assuming your vertical height is high enough, your cursor at the top is the arrow tool. Your cursor at the bottom becomes a marquee range selection tool, which each one of these has their different purposes depending on what you wanna do. And then your cursor at the top, we can hover over and we can create fades and then we have the option to curve these fades as needed. If you work like this in Logic, um, there's a, a really equal equivalent in Studio One. So first of all, worth noting that all of the tools that you would expect to see, arrow tool up here, uh, range tool, we have a cut tool, we have an eraser tool, we have a pencil tool, it's got a bunch of different lines that we have available. Uh, we have a mute tool, we have an audio bend tool, which would be specifically for working with uh, what Logic's um, uh, flex tools and stuff like that would be. And then we have our listen tool, which allows us to basically click, hold, and drag in any track. It'll just, it'll just solo it out. So these tools are all pretty familiar. And to be honest with you, these are going to work exactly as you would expect. You would, for example, click uh, an audio event, and if you wanted to separate it at a certain point, you would just hover your cursor there. If you had multiple audio events that were selected, like for example, if I had selected all of these, and I would go to my split tool, then I could split these all together. But um, in Studio One, I generally, sometimes I'll go to the blade tool, but I generally leave the pointer tool on, and then I have this option, which is link arrow and range tools. Now what happens when you link arrow and range tools is it's actually the opposite order of logic, which might take a little bit to get used to, but instead of the range tool being on the bottom and the arrow tool being on the top, the arrow tool is at the bottom, and the range tool is at the top. Now, how do these work? They work exactly as you would expect. With the, with the arrow tool, you can multi-select lots of different audio events in Studio One terminology, audio regions in Logic. We can adjust the 
fades of them all together. We can adjust the fade curves of these all together. And this responds based on the different audio events that you have selected. Now, a couple other different shortcuts that we have, which aren't, wouldn't necessarily be immediate obvious, is first of all, I want to talk about the zoom shortcuts. If you hold down Shift and Option, or Shift and Alt, depending on how your brain works or what you like to call that key, I can hover across and I can make a selection with a magnifying glass. And basically, it's going to zoom vertically and horizontally. It's going to zoom to that selection or as close as you can get to it. Now, if you hold down Shift and Option again, it will return you back to your previous state. So technically speaking, I could zoom multiple times and holding down those two modifier keys, I could back up to my different previous zoom states. So like I said, this works across an individual section, or let's say I wanted to zoom across this section just over here, but for all five of these tracks, or rather six of these tracks. Now this zooms me into just the selection I was for all six of those tracks. So that's a very useful tool. Also with respect to the range tool, um, if, if it depends also if you have snapping on, um, if you want to be able to kind of like edit in a smart way where hopefully it's not going to make any mistakes, then just make sure no different logic with your snapping. Now, with respect to the range tool, if I was to make a selection over here, I could do a couple things. First of all, any range selection that you make, a double click will break that. So, and this works across multiple tracks too. So if I selected this and I wanted to separate these regions or these events, just making that range selection and double clicking is going to break that. Meaning that you wouldn't have to hold, hold shift and then select all of these tracks and then grab the blade tool and make a split here and then make another split here. It's much easier in my opinion, just to make that range selection with our, with our arrow tool, with our link arrow and range tools, just to make that range tool selection across what we need and double click to split it. Now, in addition to that, we can also do some other stuff that I think is kind of cool. We could, for example, make this marquee selection over here and I can hold down alter option and then I'm just going to click, hold and drag and I can drag now a copy of that, but without separating things. Okay. Now with respect to things like automation, this is very similar. We have a global show hide automation, which I've actually changed the default key command by default. It is set to a. Uh, I've actually changed it just because we have kind of like a global view where it'll show all of the automation for everything in the whole entire song. Uh, or we have just a track based view where we can right click show hide automation. This is going to just show hide the automation for that one single track. So depending on what you want to do, this is just a, a really quick and easy way. Now the automation uh, with respect to how it works in logic, it's actually very similar. So for example, let me, let's bring our automation on and let's view the volume automation. If you have the range tool selected here, we can make a range selection and then I can adjust my automation and I can hover over here and adjust this automation. Now, anytime that you have two nodes that are already existing, we can just click, hold and drag to adjust them. The other cool thing is I could swipe across everything that I have here. So selecting all of these nodes in the bottom section, and then I can adjust all of these together relative to each other. Or if I go to the very end of the timeline, uh, past all of the automation points, this will globally adjust everything. And, and we see a little figure here that's showing us the volume and also the relative volume in terms of where it was before. So it's showing me minus 2.8 and minus 6.7, right? So now that's it, just making these adjustments points. And then another thing to point out in Studio One is that anytime you have two points that are a straight line that exist, you can curve them kind of like whatever curve shapes that you want so you can have smooth points. We don't need to ever do anything where we have to adjust things and make this node and then make this node and make this node and then try to zoom in and drag them down or anything like that. And just selecting across here, just like that, we can select these different automation nodes and delete them as needed. So the other thing to point out is we still have groups. So if you need a very specific task, I can select everything. Let's come out of our automation mode and I can click Command G and I can create a group. And now this group, we can adjust its attributes a couple different ways. First of all, by opening up the track list. See this icon over here, show groups. This allows us to right click and we have the group options. We can say exactly what we want this group to be part of. We can change the group's color. 
This is something that will show up nice and bright over here. Um, in addition to that, we can rename the group, we can dissolve the group. The groups are also available in the console. So if I click F3 to open up the console, we go down here, we have this groups icon, show groups. And then last but not least, we also have a place that we can see it without having to open up either the channel list or the track list. If we click our console options, we have these group assignments. And when we click the group assignments, quite simply, we can see them over here. Now I can right click and I still have that same access to the different group settings. I can change the color. I can change which parameters I want these to be part of, which things I want to be part of the group. So we have these groups and that being said, uh, when I first moved to Studio One, the biggest thing I wanted was full groups to be just like Pro Tools. And then I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of the time, a lot of the time, I will work at least probably 60% of the time, I will work with selection-based groups because I'm so used to doing that. And I just find that it makes the editing very easy. It's also very similar to Logic in that if you have multiple audio events that are selected, and you were to perform a task, like let's say I selected these, and let's, again, with, with everything highlighted here, a, a double click with the marquee tool, or the range tool rather, is going to separate everything. So if I wanted to um, trim everything, I could grab this edge and I'm trimming all of these. These are snapping to the grid, but I can momentarily hold down shift to remove myself from the grid snapping settings. So now, these all have a fade in, and then I could adjust all of their fade outs together. And notice that this is relative too. Now I can adjust the curve of all these fade outs together and they're all going to respond to each other. But also I know that in logic in the top section over here, you can actually see the individual fade in and fade out information. Um, keep in mind, we have this group active. So anything that I'm doing to one is gonna happen to everything. In here, we have fade in and fade out, and, and we can also adjust the gain here for anything that's selected. So if you prefer to work that way, where you select everything, and you wanted to just enter a very specific, like for example, 10 milliseconds, enter. We can do it that way too. Uh, most of the time though, I gotta be honest, I, I, I usually just use these fade handles and, and adjust the curve of everything together. And then if there's an area that needs to be less, um, I'll just pull everything back and because these groups are part of a block, it's responding to everything together and I just find it really easy to edit in Studio One this way. Groups, we can disable either individual groups. Click over here. Let me create another group actually. Let's select these tracks and we'll create this group. We can have nested groups so you can have groups within groups. So I can disable all the groups, suspend all, one click and that suspends all of the groups if I need to momentarily free myself from the groups and do some editing. Uh, if I wanted to disable individual groups, that's something that I can do as well. And of course, the same rules that applied when we were talking about omitting a, a track that's selected from a group. Right now, okay, this, this particular group, I know it doesn't have editing, uh, or volume rather, so let's, let's bring volume into it. So now, these are all adjusting together because it's part of the group attributes, but let's say that this one was too loud. I could hold this option down and now I'm freeing myself from the group. And again, holding shift would give me that fine, fine increment. So I could temporarily suspend that or map out the suspend all key command and click swipe across to disable all of your groups together. Now in terms of the tools, very similar to logic, pointer tool, range tool, a separate tool, eraser tool, pencil tool. This can come in handy for editing automation, drawing in very specific automation if you want. Then we have the mute tool, we can click to mute any sets of regions or any sets of events. And then we have a secondary tool over here, which you can choose. I choose the mute tool. Uh, in Logic, most of the time I used to have the marquee tool selected, but the reason I choose the secondary mute tool in Studio One is I find it very easy to leave my um, link arrow and range tools together. But then if I needed to, for example, just mute across like all of these, I've just done that really quickly or all of these, I've just done that really quickly. Or if I have all of these selected and just one click to mute all the events, I actually never do mute automation ever. I would just snip the events and mute the actual audio events as opposed to uh, automating the mute parameter in, in my console. Um, and then from there, we have another option over here, which is Bend Tool. This has really specifically to do with adjusting the timing with time compression and expansion. Uh, Studio One's audio bend markers. So be the listen tool. So I'm just gonna 
toggle back here for a moment and let's just, I can toggle all of these back on. And now anything that I wanted to listen to, again with the listen tool. And if I had my groups activated and I was to do that, it's going to be the same behavior regardless. So that is some of the similarities um, with working in Logic Pro with respect to mixing and editing. Now, the very last thing that I wanna talk about is something that I think is kind of important to a lot of Logic users in that in Logic, you have two ways that you can basically um, group tracks together in your range window. And that is either uh, a, a summing stack, so a folder that's basically linked to an aux channel, or you can just have it for organizational purposes where they're linked together and they're in a folder together, uh, but they're not linked necessarily that they're all coming out the same bus. So if we select all of these and we right click, we have the option to create a track stack and then we have two choices. We have a folder stack, which like I said, it, they're all linked together in a folder, but they have their individual routing. And then we have a summing stack. So if I was to create that in logic, now we have sum three. And then of course, in the actual console, Sum3 is linked to pretty much an aux channel where we could apply plugins and processing directly on the aux channel. So in Studio One, we have the exact same thing. It just goes by a slightly different name. Um, I'm gonna just temporarily suspend all my groups. Let me just take everything over here. Um, let's adjust these. I'm gonna pull the fade back. We'll pull this back to the very beginning. Pull this fade back and let me fully extend this out. So if I wanted to do the same thing here, I'm actually going to remove some of these tracks. So if I wanted to do the exact same thing with Studio One, it's very easy. We select all the tracks we want in our range window, we right click and we can pack a folder. Now by default, the standard folder is basically just an organizational tool. It's allowing us to keep everything organized together. But if we open up our console, also worth noting here that in the console, there are options that link the visibility of track and console and link uh, expansion and visibility of folder tracks. So if I wanted to see everything um, in my console, but not have to clutter up my range window, that's one thing that we could do. So these are all in a folder and within this folder, we can mute or we can solo these tracks, but in terms of the routing, they're still going to the exact same uh, main out that they were before. So that is one option that we have. Now the other option is, let me just bring this back over here. The other option is that we can either link this to an existing bus or we can create a new bus. So I'm going to just pull this down a little bit and where it says new, I can add a bus channel. I can also add a VCA channel so that the VC, it's not just for summing, it can be a VCA and that's a video for another time or you could search up my channel on my YouTube channel and you could search up VCAs in Studio One. But if I now add a bus channel, now this is linked to a very specific channel in that all of these, and see we have this folder icon, we can expand it and collapse. This is very similar to Logic. All of these um, over here are going to track 15 and I could name this, you know, mix or whatever I wanted to. It could just as easily be drums. It could just as easily be vocals or guitars or anything like that. But now all of these channels over here are all being routed directly from here. So that is basically setting the folder manually and then creating the bus channel. Now, the other way that this could work, let me let me right click this over here and I'm gonna remove this track. And now this has removed the folder track, but you can see that these tracks are still routed to a, a bus channel, which we've named mix. I'm gonna rename this music stems. Okay, so let's say that we have channels in our console that are routed to a bus channel. In this case, we have all of these channels which are routed to music stems. The other thing that we could do is quite simply do the exact same thing where we are selecting these over here and then I'm gonna right click and pack folder. And now in terms of the options, if we pull this down and we can you know, adjust the vertical height high enough, now not only do we have the option to add a bus channel, but I can just assign it to a bus channel. So now it's assigned directly to a bus channel. If I come in here, and then similar to Logic, depending on your preferences, um, you have the ability to basically right click and edit the automation of volume. If you, if you need to edit the bus channel within Studio One in the Arrange window, that's something that you can do just like this.
So that is kind of the basics and the similarities of working with selection-based groups, selection-based editing in Logic Pro and Studio One using Studio One smart tools. A lot of the stuff is just going to work exactly as you would assume that it does. It's it's just a, a I want to say it's just kind of like a smart program that functions the way you would think it does. If you think, okay, there's a automation points and you hover your cursor here, it's going to work like that. If you say, well, I want to move all those together and you can just swipe across and you can move them all together. It's pretty simple. Once you get the hang of it, I think you're really going to enjoy it. And it's like I said, it's not that different than, than logic by comparison. So anyways, that's it for this video. I will catch you for more in the next one. Cheers.